Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the tutorial on NoSQL and MongoDB. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about NoSQL, we are going to install MongoDB onto our computer, and then we are going to run some MongoDB commands just to see what it's like to interact with the database. You know, add something, update something, and delete something. Basically, basically CRUD CRUD commands. And um, I've got all the resources that we need for this topic on my website. Go ahead and click the link below this video to get to this web page if you need to. You might need to if you're going to follow along and try it yourself. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. Thanks. So um, let's start by talking about NoSQL. And to talk about NoSQL, let's talk about MySQL or SQL in general. Now I have another tutorial on this topic and there's another video. You can go ahead and get to this web page if you want to learn more um, about MySQL and SQL, since we already did a topic on it, but NoSQL is basically a, the opposite of it. So SQL is about structured data. You have tables and all your data is stored in tables. In NoSQL, all your data is stored basically as JSON. And it's basically easier that way. You don't have to worry about tables or consistently formatting things. You just throw whatever data you need to into a JSON object, and then you throw it into the database. And there are some reasons to do this. Why would you use NoSQL instead of SQL? Well, um, first of all, sometimes it ends up being faster, like most of the time, I think, actually, depending on the project. And if you look at tutorial points example, um, Let's say you have a blog, a, a website, and on the blog, like like this is a blog, for example, and one of the things you might have are comments for the blog, people comment on this, or you have the post itself, which is just the content of the post, including the title, the date, um, specific sections, stuff like that. And finally, you might have a tag list, which is tags for what the content's about. Maybe it's about machine learning and Node.js, so you would write tags like that. In SQL, you would need to have three separate tables for all that. You need a table for comments that are generated, you need a table for the post itself, and you need a tag list table. And that's a little tricky when you're trying to reconstruct this actual blog post for any user who comes to this web page. But in NoSQL, which in specifically Mongo, it's just like this one nice JSON object where everything can just be in this one particular instance, you don't have to worry about having tables. So that's one of the reasons to use NoSQL. And and on that note, Mongo is the popular NoSQL database. So it's the type of NoSQL most popular, you should know it. And we are going to install Mongo. And yeah, so, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to move this over to my other monitor. And I'm going to open my Ubuntu 16 virtual machine. And let's see, let's create a new folder for this project and let's call it Mongo. And let's go into here and we are going to open a terminal. And you know what, why don't I go ahead and copy and paste this blog post right here so we can get to the web page and you can all see what I'm doing right as we do it. So we're going to install MongoDB, obviously. It is going to be on our Ubuntu 16 virtual machine. I don't know if I said that. And the first thing you do is you're just going to copy and paste these commands. So um, you just copy them. I, I, I got them from this article, and it's really easy. What we are going to do is we are installing Mongo so that we can use it on our computer locally. It's just like we did for SQL. So in case you ever need to just test the database, see what it's like, you can test it locally on your computer. Oh, this update might take a while. Maybe I should pause the video. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video. And when we come back, we're going to do the next section because this might take a while. So, oh, never mind. So we are going to install MongoDB using this command. And again, this is just installing Mongo locally so that it's installed on our computer. These commands might work for Mac or Linux if they don't. I mean, Mac, probably not Windows. But you know, I'm using Windows and I've got the virtual machine running. It's always good to do your testing on Linux. So this is installing MongoDB from their repository. There are a bunch of commands. And the way this works is this is a service. You can see that we just did sudo system control start mon, mon god. And um, this will work right now for us. But if you turn the computer off, it's it's going to turn off because it's a service. It's basically like um, anytime the computer runs, 
it's not like a server in this terminal. It's just a service. Like you can close this and open it up and Mongo will still be running. But if you do turn your virtual machine off, you know, you shut it down or you restart or something like that. Anytime you want to use Mongo, you have to run this service again. So just be aware of that. There's a way on this to always have it run anytime, like automatically when your computer turns on. But just if you want to use Mongo, just use this command. Now that it's installed, you just need to start the service. So with that said, we're going to use some commands with Mongo. We're going to type Mongo and this starts a, a shell session for Mongo. So now we can use Mongo commands and that you can see that by the pointy little arrow. Yep, looks good to me. So first thing we're going to do is show DBS. And you can see we have one database, which is nothing right now. So the next thing we want to do is we want to use a database, you know, specify a database for a certain project. Maybe we're working on a banking application right now. Make a database for that banking application. But instead, we are doing this source make tutorial. So it makes sense. Use source make DB. And let's name it like that. So this use actually creates the database for us. And it switches us into this database. So we're using this database. And you know that because you can type DB. And the DB we're currently using is source make DB. Fantastic. So again, um, you would use this just to, you know, for each project you have, everyone has a different database. And the next thing we want to do is let's say we are having a blog post again, like for a website, and we want to have this database be about blog posts. Maybe it's about this particular website. You want to actually create a collection. Now, a collection is basically the same thing as a table in Mongo. So in SQL, you'd have a table, and it's just a group of data that's related to each other. In this case, our blog posts are going to be related to each other. So we are going to say, for this database that we're in, create a collection named blog post and save it. And what are we going to save? We're going to start off by making two blog posts. And this is syntax for it. You've got the parentheses for the save. And inside of it, you've got this array brackets, square brackets. And inside of those square brackets, we've got two particular blog posts that we're going to save, each inside of JSON with the curly braces. So again, we've got an array of blog posts inside, which is just JSON. So for the first blog post, we have a title with the name of how to hack and the author's source make. In the second blog post, you have a title of coding 101. And we don't have an author this time, but what we do have is a likes, and we've got one or two likes. It's an integer. So we're going to press enter, and it writes the results. Inserted to see two things got inserted. And again, the power of Mongo is that, you know, we would normally have to specify columns for this in SQL, but we don't have to in Mongo because it doesn't, it's, not, it's an unstructured. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add one more blog post. And the way you do that is, again, with save. Let me just raise this up a little. Just OK. So DB blog post save. And the title for this blog post is best coder ever. Who? We have a who. Um, how would you say this? Attribute for this JSON object. And who is source make in this case. So it gets written to the database. Easy. Next thing is we are going to find. So let's say we want to search what's in our database. You just use the find command. And for our database with the blog post collection, we are finding all, all posts, all objects inside. And we've got each of these, we've got our three blog posts that we made. Now, Mongo assigned them unique IDs. So just keep that in mind. Every time you make a insertion, there's an ID generated for that JSON object. And of course, we've got the three blog posts right here. Each of them happens to have a title. One of them has an author, one of them has a likes amount, one of them has a who attribute. So now let's say we want to find a specific one. Let's say that we want to find a blog post where the author is source make. This is the command you would use, you know, just find with the specific JSON right here inside is a search query. And it returns a result. Really simple. Of course, because the author is source make and the object the document that has that is this one right here where the title is how to hack. Now let's say we wanted to update something. So let's update one of our blog posts. So this is a command db blog posts. Um, for our blog posts collection, we're going to update one of the blog posts. 
And what are we going to update? We're going to update the blog post whose author is source make. I'm going to change that author to make source. So this is going to find the blog post where the author is source make. Any, I, I think this one is the first one that it hits. So if we had like two blog posts where the author was source make, this command would only do one of them. It would only update the first one. If you want to update them all, I think there's a different command. I didn't really check. But yeah, just keep that in mind. So it matched one and it changed it. So how do we verify this? We can find and you can see that the author changed from source make up here to make source because we updated it. Really simple, basic. And we've got a couple more things to do. How do we delete a blog post? Well, let's remove that new blog post that we made. Not new, the updated one. So blog posts, um, for our blog post collection, remove any, not any, this might be just remove the first one you find where the author is make source. So do that and you can see that and removed one because it removed one. How can we check again? Why don't we search all blog posts, see what the results are. And you can see now there are only two results because it removed the one where the author was make source. And if you want to remove all the blog posts, you know, just don't specify any anything inside of it. There's really no reason you would need to use this probably, but you can see that we remove and the criteria for anything is just remove everything. There's no criteria, just remove any everything you see. And that removes everything. So again, just do a blog post that find if you want to see what's inside the database. And there's nothing there because our database is empty. Everything got removed. So that is MongoDB. Now, the reason we went over these commands is to test things locally on our computer just to set up a database if we need to practice. You, you know what the commands are. If you need to set up some test cases or some examples, you know how to do it right now. You know the code, you know how to do it locally on your computer. No need to worry about it like some online database. But most of the time, you're not going to be working with Mongo databases just straight from the command line. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be in your Node.js project and you have to actually work with it in the Node.js code. So I'm going to be doing another tutorial where we look at Mongo in programming languages like Node.js. Probably Node.js is the only one we're going to use. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we will be doing another tutorial where we use Mongo programmatically and we update databases like that. But for now, you have a base knowledge of NoSQL and Mongo databases. You can do things locally on your computer. If you ever need to export a database, set it up, you can just Google the commands because you know how to do it. So I'm SourceMake. Thanks for watching.